Okay, so I would like to give you some specific stuff for vectors. So let me first denote a vector in R3. My favorite vector is this one. Okay, so one thing about vectors that I don't particularly like that your book uses, they just use parentheses and I can't tell this from a point. You guys all see that? So the way I'm going to tell this from a point is I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to say this is u, which is a vector, as opposed to like versus, how would you say this is a point? You would have the vector. Yeah, you'd maybe like call it p or something, right? So the only way I'm going to tell these apart is a naming convention. And the only way I'm going to need a, the only way I'm going to know is if there is a naming convention there, right? If they don't bother to name this thing, then I'm left a little bit wobbly. You guys all see that? What's the effective difference between a point and a vector? So like, if I'm drawing pictures, right? Where's this one zero zero vector? Yeah, good. This starts at the origin, right? And goes out to the point that it would indicate. Which ends up being the point P. You guys see that? So the difference is that this thing, right, is the blue dot. And this guy denoted as a vector, right, is the arrow that goes from the origin to there. Good. Yeah. So unless I denote otherwise, and if I base a vector someplace else, I'll put a little base stat thing down here. So you can decorate these a little bit. You can throw a point down here, and that would be the vector that starts at this point. We're not going to have occasion to do that very often. Slash probably never. Cool. When you go through the 13.1, the section on displacement vectors, What's a displacement vector? What's a displacement? Does that word make sense? If you guys give me an English. Shifts it to a different position than expected. Yeah, displacement, right, is kind of a movement, right? So a displacement vector between two points is just a push that you have to use to get from one point to the other. So when you're the origin to P. Yeah, so these vectors, right, are displacements from the origin. So I'm displaced from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 0, 0 in this case. It's all good with that? You really can just treat these like they're centered at the origin all the time, and it'll be fine. Cool? Question seal? OK. All right. So this is just notational, right? What other vector is going to be really important to me? Zero one zero and then zero zero one. Oh, good. Okay, so those ones are so special. Actually, they'll give them different names. So this guy, this guy, and this guy. I J K. Yeah, good. These are I J and K, which we'll have occasion to use here sometimes. You guys all with me on that? Why are these vectors convenient? You can make any points by combinations of them. Yeah. You guys see that? If I want to make a vector, right, it's the same as making a point. You need a x, a y, and a z coordinate. So whatever I do to i plus whatever I do to j plus whatever I do to k is going to give me a way to kind of decompose vectors. Is all good with that? Mm. OK. So those ones are important. What's the other important one? No. So close. Dumber. Yeah, the zero vector. So zero as a vector, this is not an O, this is a zero, is what? Zero, zero, zero. What is this? 
Cool. What's that good for? It's parallel with every other vector. Yeah, it's good for, I'm going to have to exclude this from a whole crap load of stuff. Like, every time I say something about a vector, I want at least one of you to think, is what he just said true for the zero vector? Okay. Who wants to be the keeper of the zero vector? Somebody has to do it. Railer, you can be. Yeah. You guys got it. Every time I say something about a vector, look at the other one of you. Who's <laughs> got this? And ask, what about the zero vector? And if the answer is not obvious, ask me. Okay. I guarantee this will stumble me up at least once in here. Cool? So this is important because it causes little issues, and we need to exclude it from a bunch of stuff or at least consider it in specific cases. Cool? So does that mean it's a point, or is it just this is a little vector? It's a vector. This is a vector, right? Okay. This vector is weird, though. Why? Like. I was thinking about vectors as magnitudes and directions, right? It has all the directions. But it has neither magnitude nor direction. <laughs> but it has all the directions, but no magnitude. <laughs> you see this, this yeah. stuff over here with that? It has no direction, but it has all the directions. Yeah, that's exactly the problem. These guys are pretty obvious, right? This one goes in the x direction, x -direction and is magnitude one. one long, right? J goes in the y direction and is one long. K goes in the z direction and is still one long. Still one long. These are right convenient because they're one long. Cool. This guy, I don't know about direction, but how long is that one? What's the magnitude of the zero vector? Absolutely not. Zero. Okay. Cool. Um, we probably should come up with a way to calculate the magnitude of an arbitrary. So, oops, not zero. What if I wanted the magnitude of the vector x, y, z? Uh, it's distance. Yeah, I just need to apply the distance formula to the point x, y, z, right? And zero. So I get. This is the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Yes? I don't particularly like writing square roots that big. So you'll often see that we'll talk about things like the magnitude squared of x, y, z, which would be what? X squared plus y squared plus c squared. Question steals on this? No? Maybe? Okay. All right. Uh, let me ask this. If you take a vector x, y, z and add a vector a, b, c to it, Uh, wouldn't it be a, uh, sorry, x plus a comma y plus b comma z plus c? Cool. That seems reasonable. Uh, why? Why would you just add the components? Because it's similar to a point when you're adding the x and the y and the z together. Yeah. So you're just adding the x and the y together? Right. You're adding the components that go in the same directions. You guys see that? This x goes in the x direction. These pushes are perpendicular to that, right? You guys all see this? Mm -hmm. So really, I only care about the x push. Well, that's x plus a. And then for the next coordinate, really, I only care about the y push. So you just add the pushes in their relative directions. You guys cool with this? Another way you could think about this is you could break these into the i, j, k components. Mm -hmm. And then think about it like like terms. So another thought here would be to say this is x times the i vector plus y times the j vector plus z times the k vector plus right this whole thing plus what? A i b j c k. Perfect. 
right? And then combine like terms, and you'll get the same thing. So with that, cool, cool. Physics people are especially fond of writing vectors this way for some reason. So you'll usually see this in a physics class. You'll usually see this kind of thing in a math class. Whatever, they're both the same. Don't sweat it. Okay. We're not making up random stuff. I promise. But it was magic. It's not magic. It all has a reason. Uh, so what's the other thing we need to talk about? What was the other thing I promised you that I haven't done here? With specifics. Oh, yeah, I didn't teach you scalar multiplication, right? And I definitely haven't taught you dot products or cross products yet. Yeah. So, how do you do scalars with this? If you take a lambda scalar and multiply by a vector x, y, z, what should this do? Oh, yeah. Right? This should make it lambda times longer, right? So, really. If I want to make it lambda times longer in the x direction, I just distribute onto the x, and then it needs to be that longer in the y direction, so distribute onto the y. So I get lambda x, lambda y, lambda z. That's all good with us? So this is parallel, but in, wait, but lambda longer. Um, What's possibly confusing about that? You guys are all smiling and nodding like I'm making total sense, but there's something confusing. See it? Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, right? Maybe if uh, lambda is zero, then the whole thing just goes away. Yeah, right? That seems weird. You guys all with that? Right? I made them the keeper of the zero vector, and they're doing a nice job. If you multiply the zero scalar by any vector at all, what do you get out? The zero vector, as one should, right? That seems expected. So what's the other thing that could be confusing here? I kind of just said something, but maybe we should write it down. Let's write it down. Oh, yeah, that would be weird. Uh, you guys see that? Like, what's negative 2 times, I don't know, 1, 1, 2 look like? Negative 2, negative 2, negative 4. Okay. So I can calculate the coordinates for sure, right? Shifts direction entirely, basically. Okay, so hang on. So, how do I draw this thing? Okay, uh, I think we need a vector drawing lesson very briefly. So I'm going to draw this in blue. So I'm going to go over 1 in the x, right? Back 1 in the y. And up 2 in the z. So, so far here... I have a i, a j, and two k's, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys see that? So I thought about this thing as i plus j plus two k, k plus k, right? Okay. Right you guys all with me on that? And then where's the result? You remember earlier I said like sometimes you'll have occasion to add like a schmack load of vectors together. Right? Here I'm adding four vectors together. How does it work? So it's from the origin to the end result. Yes, you start where you started, right? And you end where you ended. So you get this vector here. So that's my original vector, one, one, two. Okay, where's this vector? Okay, so I should need to go Minus 2 in the i direction, right? So back, back, then 2 in the, two in the y. Negative 2 in the y direction. Negative 2 in the y direction, right? So back, back, and then down, 4 down. Four. And then down 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 
and then here's my resulting vector, right? You guys see that I didn't quite get my picture? So this was my minus 2, minus 2, minus 4. What's a little bit off about my picture? Should they be parallel to each other? Yeah, they should be parallel, right? So when I said before that this should be right, scalar times a vector, should be the same direction, but this much longer. Well, that lie to you a little bit. Yeah, kind of, right? If it's positive, then it's the same direction. If it's negative, then it's kind of but the opposite direction. But stays parallel to the original direction, correct? Yeah, so we need a concept for parallel, right? You guys see that? Like, I want to write down u is parallel to v. What does that mean? Yeah, perfect. If there's one scalar so that u is some lambda v, right, where lambda is a real number, right? You guys cool with that? So this is a definition, right, of what parallel means? You guys all good with that? Keep in mind it's got to be the same scalar all the way through here, right? Uh, Rayla, what are you supposed to ask? Uh, what if lambda is a zero? No. <laughs> <laughs> what, if you what about the zero vector, oh, right? Yeah, zero vector. So, what about the zero vector? Yeah, zero is parallel to everything. You guys all see that? The, la the zero lambda, right, makes this true kind of regardless. That's that thing about, does it have no direction or all the directions? Kind of seems like all the directions is almost a better answer, because it's parallel to everything. Now we could, of course, make a kind of alternate definition here, where we said, this is parallel, but lambda is not allowed to be zero. And then the zero vector wouldn't be parallel to anything. You guys all see that? I'm going to go with this one because it makes some stuff later easier. But if you read other math textbooks, it's possible that they've got that switch. Cool? Question steals? Okay. This is what I want you to have for vectors. Oh, um, I did vectors in R3, right? Yep. How would a vector in R2 be different? Yeah, you wouldn't have a Z component. How would a vector in R10 be different? Yeah, there'd be a bunch more components. Uh, it should be noted that if we do over three dimensions, you don't do I, J, K usually. You do X1, X2, X3. So those would look like X1, X2, X3, X4. So kind of continue this. Right, and these would just be the standard yeah. one, like zero, zero. one and zeros, and then zero, one and zeros, and whatever. Yep. You guys all good with that? Yeah. Okay, so make the kind of usual assumptions with those. They're one long, they go in the direction of whatever coordinate you're talking about. Cool, cool? Questions? No, hang on, I'm shutting this off.